Hi, my name is Heather and welcome to another episode of Wacom Plus Cricut, my series where I show you how to create digital assets for the Cricut using your Wacom tablet. For this lesson, we're going to be creating monogram art. This is just where you take the entire alphabet of letters and you're just going to create more artistic looking letters that people can use as monograms. These are really popular to put on shirts or hats or water bottles, all kinds of stuff. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for something that you can sell online or of course make for yourself or for someone else as a gift or you know whatever you want to do with it. And of course, I want to give a huge thank you to Wacom for sending me this tablet and for sponsoring this series. If you search Etsy, Google, or Pinterest for monogram SVG, then you'll find a whole bunch of different kinds of designs that you can make. So this can give you ideas and help you think of what you can do for your monogram art. Of course, you don't want to completely copy someone else, but this can help spark ideas. Some different ones that I've seen are floral designs, animal prints, patterns like polka dots, stripes, that kind of thing. I've also seen having a creature with the letter. So you could do like a woodland animal with each letter or a dinosaur with each letter. Those are super cute too. The possibilities are really endless. You can just kind of go with all kinds of interests that people have and just things that are cute or pretty or whatever you like. I'm in Affinity Designer here, and I'm gonna start by creating a new document. I'm gonna go to File, New, and I'm going to create just a standard letter size page. As I always say, when you're doing vector, the size doesn't matter too much because it can be scaled to any size. I'm just gonna make sure I have letters selected over here on the left. Set the DPI to 72 and I'll just do create. Here is my letter size document, and we're just going to be doing a single color SVG for this. Feel free, if you wanna go more advanced, you can add a couple more colors in. I wouldn't do too many colors because remember, this is gonna be used for iron-on or decals, and the more colors that you put in your design, the more different pieces of vinyl that your customer will have to cut from. So I'm gonna start by grabbing my little text box here and I'm going to click and drag however big I want my letter to be. And I'm just gonna type out the alphabet. You can put a space between each letter. That way you have a good amount of room between the letters to draw. And when I get to the end, I'll just press enter and keep going. Now I've typed all my letters and I'll just grab my arrow tool and I'm going to click on my group of letters and then I can just position this, make it a little smaller if I need to, so I can fit everything in there. Now I'm going to pick a font that I'm going to use for these letters. I like to try to find something really thick that will give me a lot of room to draw. So I'm going to go up here to my toolbar and where it has the font here, I'm going to click the little arrow and I'll just kind of browse through these and try to find something that I like. You can either do like a hand-drawn font or you can pick more of a standard font. It's really up to you. You will wanna make sure that you have a commercial license for the font that you're using. So wherever you got your font from, just make sure that you check the website for what their terms are and make sure that you do have the rights to use the font in a design. Here's my font that I'm going to be using. It's called Almond Nougat, and it's one of my favorite fonts. I wanna be able to use just the shape of the letter, but not have it filled in. So I'm gonna take this font, add a stroke to it, so that I can have the outline of the letter. So I'm gonna go over to my color panel on the right. Over here, you can see that the fill is black and the stroke is transparent. So we want it to be the opposite. So I'm just gonna click this little curved arrow here and that's gonna flip it. Now you can see we have an outline and there's no fill. I definitely want the outline to be thicker than this. So I'm gonna go to the stroke panel and if any of these panels don't show up, you can always go up here and just find the panel. So for the stroke panel, you would go to window stroke. Now I'm going to just make it thicker 
Now I can convert these to shapes because we're not going to want them to be actual text to bring into Cricut Design Space. We're going to need them to be shapes. So with all of this text selected, we can go up to Layer, Convert to Curves. Now, if I go to the Layers panel, I can see that these are all converted to curves. But now I want to actually convert them to shapes because right now they're just actual strokes. First, I need to ungroup them. So I'm going to go to Layer, Ungroup. And now, as you can see, they're not in that group anymore. So now I can go to Layer, Expand Stroke. And now, if we click on our Node Select tool, then you can see that we have an actual shape here. So it has the outline here and the outline here, and it's outlining the shape. So like this stroke right here isn't really a stroke, it's a shape. And this is a shape, and this is a shape. So now we have everything in shapes, so we can do whatever we want with it. So I'm going to move over to the letter A, and now I can start drawing. So I'm going to grab my brush tool, and I'm just going to go over to my brushes panel, which if you don't see it, you can just go to window brushes. I'm just going to pick the most basic brush. So this is the solid pen with pressure. And I'm going to make sure that I have pressure selected here for controller. And if I test it out, I can see that it's skinny and then gets thick. That's a little too thick for me though. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit thinner up here. And that looks good. So now I can start drawing my design. I'm going to go with a floral design because I think flowers are just one of the simplest, easiest, and most fun things to draw. So I'm going to start by just adding some flowers around here. And as you can see, I have this one flower overlapping the edge of the letter. So for that part, I would like to take out that section of the letter so it looks like the flower is in front of it. So in order to do that, I'm going to grab my select tool and I'm going to click on the letter. And now I'm going to grab my knife tool and I'm going to slice the letter like that and slice it here. So wherever I want it cut. And now if I grab my select tool, I can grab that little piece and just take it out and delete it. And now that is gone from the design. And you may need to just kind of adjust things a little bit afterwards if it wasn't perfectly exact. So I can just grab my node select tool and I'll just click on this and I could just move these a little bit if I need to, like this one's overlapping down here. And of course you can adjust your drawing too if there's anything that you wanna fix there. Now I'll just add some more embellishments here. You can also copy and paste some of your elements across the letters. So that is really helpful too, because there are a lot of letters in the alphabet. So like I could take this flower here. So I'm just gonna select all the pieces of the flower and I'll just go to edit, duplicate. And now I have another one and I can just set it somewhere like right here. And I'll just continue on with my design.
I'm all done with the whole alphabet now. So now all I have to do is take all of these strokes that I've just drawn and change them into shapes. So I'm just going to grab my select tool and I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go to layer, expand stroke. Now, if we grab our node select tool and grab everything, you can see all these little points because everything's been turned into shapes. Let's zoom in so we can see that a little bit better. So I'll grab my node select tool and here we can see that there's all these little nodes going around the shapes. And that's how you know that it's not just a line because remember before we saw the line and it would have like a node here and a node here and a node here. But now we have the nodes going around the entire shape. So we have it going here and going here. Now the next thing is that notice how these two shapes overlap. So if you've ever used the Cricut before, then you know the Cricut would cut along this line and cut along this line, and then you would have this little shape here cut out and it would fall out of your design. So what we need to do is take those two shapes and combine them into one shape so that they're not overlapping each other anymore. One thing that we want to make sure of, though, is that the letters are separate items from each other so that the user can grab just the A or just the M, and it's not going to be one huge shape with all the letters in it. So when we combine them like this, we're going to combine them letter by letter. So I'm going to grab the select tool, and I'm going to select the A and all of the A's embellishments. Then I will go over here to where we have our little shape operations. And I'm going to click the first one that shows the two shapes together and it says add. So I'm going to click that. And now if we zoom in and grab our node select tool, then you can see that it is all one shape now. So you don't have any overlapping cuts. We can zoom in even further and that'll make it a lot easier to see. So here, see how this is all one shape. And it's not like there's the line of the petal overlapping the line of the inside of the flower. It's just one shape all combined. So that's good. Let's go ahead and do that for all of our letters. So I'm just going to grab my select tool, grab all of one letter and do add. Now that's all done. And if you want, you can always test it by just clicking on these and you can zoom in if you want and just make sure that it is all one shape. And as always, we can use the node select tool to make any little adjustments that we want to. We have a gap right here that I could just pull this up if I wanted to, to fill in that little gap. You can really go through here and just kind of fine tune your design. If you have a little hole right here, then you can actually just grab that hole and delete it. So you want to use your node select tool and you're going to start outside of the shape. So you don't want to click on the shape. You want to be outside of it and you're going to click and drag and make sure that you surround all of those nodes that you want to delete. And then you can just do delete and the hole goes away. So you can really work on fine tuning your design as much as you want to or as little as you want to. Those little holes can really be a nuisance when making Cricut projects, so I do recommend going through and trying to get rid of as many of those that you find. And now that that's done, if you want to do any different arranging here, you can. If you resize it, make sure you hold down Shift to constrain your proportions. And now this is ready to go. I'm just going to make sure that I save my current file. I just saved it as an Affinity Designer file, and now I'm going to export it as an SVG for Cricut Design Space. So I'll go to File, Export, and I'm going to select SVG for Export. Then we can scroll down and make sure you uncheck Set View Box, and this will make sure that it comes through as the right size, and then we can click Export. Now the last step is always going to be to check our work. So let's go ahead and open up Cricut Design Space. I'm in a new project here and I'm just going to go to Upload, Upload Image, 
brows. I'll grab my SVG that I just saved and upload. And then I'm going to click on it and do add to canvas. And here we have our whole alphabet. The SVGs always come through as a group in Cricut Design Space, but if we just grab that group and then ungroup it, we can just grab each letter out separately. And that's perfect. That's exactly what you want for your customer. So now your SVG is ready to distribute online, whether you want to sell it on a digital marketplace or share with friends or make your own projects. Thank you again to Wacom for sending me this tablet and for sponsoring this series. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, as always, you can let me know in the comments or you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.